Hello, investors. Welcome to yet another edition of 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Friends, we certainly know markets have changed and it is a little bit tough out there right now. And that is why we are so focused on companies that firstly are in a structural thematic uptrend with huge amounts of demand. Secondly, we're looking for those companies that on a company specific basis can really shape their future. And third, we're also looking for those companies out there with a management team willing to get out and do what is necessary to get done. And that is why I'm so excited to welcome back Chris Dawes from Estrella Resources, because Estrella, as some of you may know and everybody should know, is one of the most exciting nickel explorers and potentially getting into production companies out there. And with the introduction, Chris, welcome back to the show. Hi, Greg. Pleasure to be back. Certainly a pleasure to be back talking to you on 180 Markets platform and hello, listeners. Hey, Chris, just to back up for a second, Carboid, the nickel project, project that you have, that's your flagship project. Can you just tell us a little bit about it and maybe even go back to October, I believe, of 2020 when the market got really excited? Yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, Estrella obviously has been cracking away at the T5 nickel deposit um, or mineralization for the past couple of years now. We haven't stopped drilling out there. We certainly believe we're starting to get a bit of a handle on the plunge in the direction of this nickel mineralization and nickel and copper, uh, nickel sulfide. Uh, it's about a kilometer north of the carboid mine that was mined in the 70s. But we certainly haven't lost any faith in the ability for the carboid intrusion to uh, provide us with a world-class ore body. And, it's just a matter of, and I keep saying it, it's drill holes in time and we're certainly putting the drill holes in and we're, we're spending a bit of time trying to figure this out. But we are drilling at the moment quite extensive extensions to T5 through uh, EM plates that are 150 metres uh, in size. They're not small EM plates. So they're indicative of, of massive nickel sulphides and we believe that we'll continue to drill and, and outline the mineralized body at T5. And we think it will represent something fairly substantial or potentially lead us into uh, a chamber of nickel sulfides that um, could be extremely valuable in the current backdrop of the nickel market as it is today. Yeah, and one of the things that makes you also different as far as your technique at Carboy that was done, I believe, prior to call the 1980s, is you are going down a little bit deeper. Is that correct? Yeah, look, we believe that the nickel sulfide body at Carboid will be sub 400, 500 metres. And we've, we've believed that for some time. And we've, we've, we realise that, um, you know, deep drilling is required and diamond drilling at that. And it's a slow process. Some of these holes take uh, three to four weeks to drill. Um, and you just have to put the time and effort in. You have to drill these holes and then you have to survey them, use the best techniques and the modern technology that we can to determine where these nickel sulfides might be running and then test, test and keep testing until we know exactly what we're dealing with. And we've had quite a bit of success with the drill bit so far. Um, it's taking some time, but we haven't lost any faith in what Carboid could potentially deliver. There's still an enormous amount of basal contact fertile uh, basal contact that needs to be tested. And we've got a number of prospects where we put initial RC holes in shallow depths where we're seeing nickel and copper sulfides returning. And we've just got to go back and test it at depth. And that, that, that does take some time, but we have two diamond rigs operating there at the moment. Uh, one rig testing the regional areas of the basal contact. And we have one doing the drill out of the EM plates at T5. And that's a big rig, that's a UDR 1200. It's capable of doing 3000 meters depth, not that we're drilling at those depths at the moment, um, but we, we've got capacity to drill some deep holes and target these EM plates. And we're very hopeful that um, one of these holes is gonna come in for us and lead us into what we're actually trying to discover. And that's a big nickel sulfide ore body. We're not drilling, um, you know, seven and a half, 12 and a half meter, uh, plates. We're, bit, we're drilling big EM plates at fairly uh, and fairly big distances between our drill holes. And so at 600 metres depth, they just, it just, just does, does take time. And um, we haven't lost any faith. It is our flagship project. And uh, we'll continue to do that uh, until, we, until we have that breakthrough. Yeah. And Chris, we have some serious upcoming catalysts here. You are out there right now doing, I believe, expansion work at T5. 
Can you just tell us a little bit more about it and also maybe the timing of it? Yeah, so that's underway now. Uh, we're drilling uh, probably another 15 holes down at uh, T5, looking at uh, these extensions that these EM plates have given us away from the T5 mineralisation that's been intersected in previous holes. So for instance, one of our deep diamond holes, 57, intersected uh, three zones of sulphide. Some of that was massive sulphide, up to 4% nickel, um, which is very high grade. In, in these sort of systems, 4% nickel uh, is a very high grade in a intrusion related um, nickel sulphide body. So if we can locate a, a massive 4% nickel sulphide in reasonable thicknesses, and these EM plates don't give you a sense of thicknesses, they just give you a sense of conductivity that could potentially represent massive sulphides, thus you have to drill them. And so the very next drill hole that we drill, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 metres away could potentially lead us into a, a fairly significant body of um, 4% nickel copper sulphides. That's why we're doing it. Um, and we'll continue to survey the new holes and see where that leads us with EM plates and the plunge direction and where this nickel sulphide's going or whether it peters out. So far, it's not. So far, we're seeing nickel sulphides in the drill holes that we're targeting into these EM plates. So we'll continue to do that until we've fully tested it. Yeah. And Chris, one of the things that's, again, so exciting about Australia, and as you're describing, you are going big game hunting. You are not looking for a small little project. You are looking for these big upsides. Is that correct? 100%, and that's why we got involved with Carboy. The, these intrusion related nickel sulfide uh, ore bodies uh, are inherently large. They're, they're 100,000 nickel ton, tons plus. Um, they are large. We're not talking about a small, uh, smallish comatiite flow uh, on surface that might generate, if you're lucky, 40 or 50,000 nickel tons. These, these are inherently very large systems. Cardboard intrusion itself uh, is a very large system, um, um, surface extent of some 75 um, square kilometres. So, and we have all of that covered in our uh, tenement package. So um, very large systems generate very large ore bodies. And we believe that the fertility of the cardboard nickel sulphide uh, intrusion is is certainly warranting what we're doing and and how we're going about it. So it's just holes in time, and uh, hopefully it will deliver what we're looking for. And that is a very large nickel sulphide ore body that we can economically mine. Yeah, and Chris, you know, I go back to when we first spoke. I believe it was just around October of 2020, where you described then it is a matter of getting holes in the ground. At that point, you had had a massive bonanza haul, and obviously that's what it reflected within the share price. It sounds like you are just as confident today as you were back then. Is that accurate? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right, Greg. We haven't lost any faith in this project. And if anything, we're, we've been strengthening the team out there. We've, we've increased our capacity to handle drill cores. We've, we've actually just ramped up the drilling again um, by putting the second diamond rig on site to do the regional work. Um, obviously, we're getting indications um, through our drill work that we, we are on target. That's why we're spending the money. That's why we're drilling the holes. We 100% we believe that this project will deliver over time. Great. Hey, Chris, moving on, you know, you've had some news on Spargaville in the last, I believe it's even 24 hours of this filming. Can you just discuss it a little bit? Because it is a step change in the business. Yeah, it probably comes as a bit of a surprise for some of the shareholders and some of the market that we actually do own four nickel sulphide bodies in the Cambelder district um, under nickel rights uh, uh, purchase that we made back in 2017. So we had that package uh, and have done some work on that uh, and drill work on, on that uh, nickel right package 20 kilometres southwest of Cambelder uh, back in 20, uh, 2018. So some uh, over three years ago, we did some initial drill work there, but Again, these, these sulphide bodies in that district uh, inherently are, um, they're small. Um, they're not going to provide 100,000 nickel tons for us, but sometimes, as they say, small, sweet, small fish are the sweetest. And in the current uh, nickel price environment, we see that these potential, there is an enormous amount of potential for us as a, as a group, as a company, to go forward and develop these deposits uh, one after the other, um, starting with 5A, and we're doing um, some detailed work on mining studies uh, to a level that will allow us to 
give us a, a firm belief that we will make very good money out of these projects. So we're going through that process. We've engaged um, some very good um, mining types. We've been an exploration company for the last uh, three, four years. So the expertise that we're, we're now looking at, uh, I guess, strengthening so that we can um, look forward to building up pit optimizations and how we're going to go about um, you know, pulling that all together, uh, we need we need specialist people. So we've gone out and sourced that. They're, they're now sort of in the fold, uh, sort of under contract, you could say. And we're going to continue um, to ramp up that work so that we can get the initial first project, which is 5A, which is a small open pit. Um, it was mined in the 90s, I believe, by Melbourne Resources. It was a very high grade nickel uh, oxide that they used. In fact, it was so high grade that they used just flux into the nickel smelter. Um, and so it's, it's a very high grade uh, nickel sulphide body. In fact, our drilling back in 2018 delivered some exceptional results um, at the base of the pit. So in terms of uh, technical aspects of the the 5A mine, it's right. very basic. It's a it's a small open pit cutback. It will provide something at current nickel prices in excess of twenty million dollars of nickel uh, will come out of that pit, um, and it it will generate for us um, significant cash flow if we can um, get to that point and extract that fresh nickel sulphide ore. Um, it's a small pit cut back. It's probably going to have a depth of about 80 metres. The current pit is about 30 right. metres. So extending the pit by about 50 metres. Um, it, it's a very simple thing. It's it, The nickel sulphides are very visual um, compared to the host rock. Um, it, it, it's very close to uh, processing facilities. Uh, obviously, those discussions we need to uh, get to once we know the full optimization and what we're going to be delivering. But obviously, we've seen uh, what's been happening in the district. Uh, the Campbell Nickel Concentrator, obviously run by BHP Billiton, has only just recently fired up. In fact, it, it was uh, just recommenced after about 12 or 13 years being dormant. Uh, it's having the first uh, ore process through there at the start of this month. So there's some big changes in the district. And obviously that with the backdrop of the nickel price, we see now that right. the timing is absolutely right to push forward with development opportunities for these nickel assets. And they are, they are valuable. We bought them very well. Um, they don't cost us anything to hold. We have no rents, no rates and no, no commitments. So they're extremely valuable to the company in the current environment. And we're just gonna get on with the job and potentially be the very next nickel producer in Australia. And that will surprise a few people. Yeah, and Chris, I think it's just another example of management trying to create shareholder value, I suppose, by any means necessary, but also more specifically, in your case, taking advantage of the huge nickel thematic going into battery space. And as a reminder for the audience, you have a significant personal interest, too, as a shareholder. So we're all, uh, we're all I suppose, in it together. Isn't that accurate? Oh, we're very driven, obviously. Um, at the end of the day, we're driven for shareholders. And, and, and you're correct, I'm, I'm a fairly large shareholder in Australia, and so is my family and, and friends. And we've got a very clear vision of where we want to take the business. Um, obviously, driving revenue from these uh, nickel assets at Cambelda will put money in the bank that we can then go and utilise for some more aggressive exploration or development of those assets and certainly continue the efforts that we have at Carboid. And we'll we'll press on, we'll press on pretty hard. We, we see that the nickel price isn't coming down anytime soon and we just wanna take advantage of that. We bought well, we've got the right asset portfolio and we'll just continue on and add value and hopefully the, sh the share market will come along with us and um, see some value as well. And um, you know, we'll just get on with the job. Yeah, hey Chris, you know, we have to talk, obviously the whole market, as I mentioned earlier, has gotten a lot softer. I believe the NASDAQ is down, 26, 27% year to date, many share prices are down as well. But what we look for is a disconnect between the fundamentals of a business and where the share price is. And in your mind, do you see, let's say over the last six months, a big disconnect at Estrella between where the share price is versus where the company is and nickel prices for that matter? Yeah, look, great, good question. We, um, we're no different. We're no orphan to the rest of the market. We, uh, and certainly any CEO will tell you share price is a lot lower than where it should be. But yeah, look, we see 
Estrella is it has has enormous value. Uh, the market at the moment uh, where it sits was circa 25, 30 million dollars. I think um, the value that we can drive out of our assets, uh, ultimately, if we do the right things and we're successful, um, is going to be a lot higher. Um, when that will be, um, I guess the drill bit will tell us that pretty shortly. But um, we certainly believe that that the asset portfolio and the backdrop of what we're dealing with at the moment, uh, Australia, it does look for us is looks cheap. I mean, I bought a little bit more stock in the market the other day, but um, you know, the, the the market is what it is. Uh, eventually, they'll they'll cotton on to where the value is. I don't think the market's gone away. There's been some talk and discussions about um, the interest rate rises and where where is the resource market going to go from here? Is it is it over? And I've been having this discussion with various parties over the course of the last few weeks. And it's extremely clear to me that the one fundamental driver that will continue to drive the resource sector is metal prices. And metal prices have not come down. They've gone up. They'll continue to go up. And there's value in our market and the resource space. So uh, as long as that continues, I still think we'll see uh, capital, capital deployed to the resource market and people that are... Uh, going well with their exploration efforts and adding value, uh, increasing resources, et cetera, will we'll, uh, obtain some, some value lift. And I think uh, there's still a lot of room for the resource sector to perform very well over the course of the next year or two or years ahead because the fundamentals have not changed. Yeah. Hey, Chris, we want to keep it short and that we completely agree with you, especially regarding nickel and especially regarding share prices. Do you have any closing remarks for the audience? Uh, Greg, all I can say is Estrella is continuing on. Uh, we're going to keep drilling the holes. Uh, we're going to obviously get on with the development of uh, the 5A de definitive feasibility study. I have no doubts where that will take us. Uh, I think we'll be producing nickel sulfides for the markets uh, in a short period of time. I'm hopeful that we'll, uh, we'll be the next nickel sulfide producer in Australia. So go Estrella and... Um, Watch this space. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching another episode of 18 Minutes with 1A Markets. And don't forget, if you want access to thousands of capital raises, sign up at 180markets.com.au and you'll get access to our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.